<laughs> today on uh, Goat Hammer's 15 processes of blacksmithing, we are doing scrolling, bending, and folding. Uh, this is all about rotary motion. So if you think about your anvil, you know, predominantly in the forging zone, we've been talking about using the anvil as the underside of compression, using the hammer as the top side of compression. Um, what we're going to consider the anvil as for this series is a fulcrum. So how do you use the different parts and the different shape of the anvil to act as a fulcrum to create bends in the manner that you want or a fold or a turning motion. So, uh, I'm going to quickly demo how to scroll. Uh, this is a piece of half inch, put a way long taper on it. Um, and I'm just going to keep scrolling it up, starting off right at the center, trying to keep that scroll nice and open. Just roll with it. A uh, big trick to this is don't bite too much. You want to start small, because if you start small, and keep it in control as you go. Uh, it's very tricky to get into the inside if you've already gone past it. That's a nice start. Uh, your taper is important. If you have a raggedy taper, it's all full of lumps and bumps, because the, let's, let's call it the pressure returned to you by the section of the material, uh, because it is uneven. You know, you have a sallow, so if you have a nice clean taper like that, um, the pressure is going to increase as you go up the bar. But if your material is like this, obviously here is thicker, thinner, here is thicker, thinner, or thicker, thinner, blah, blah, blah. So this is going to predominantly want to kink. So make sure that your taper is nice and clean in order to make that um, easier for you. If you're doing more decorative scrolls like um, Edgar Brandt style stuff where he's doing a lot of florette type pieces, because they are uh, mechanically the material is bitten and drawn out and so on and so forth to create the scalloping, when you actually scroll it it's quite difficult to control because they are uneven. Right, quite natural. Keep scrolling. Notice I'm not really striking in hard pulling up a fairly large amount of material and then just rolling it back and mixing it up between what is fulcrum and what is force, understanding the forces, how they behave. It's really one of those weird things, you've just got to have hours at the anvil and doing these things in order to be able to get them to do. Um, I didn't understand scrolls for quite a while. And then one day, it just all clicked. That's no bad. And hopefully as I'm running through this, you'll see you know, 400 different variances of how to adjust, how to correct, how to control. Um, basically, as you're scrolling, you're, you're throwing your repertoire of, of straightening skills, essentially, at the thing. Though you're you're running a curve, you're still applying the forces in the same manner that you would create a straightened line. Um, so if you want to get a bend in a certain place, you have to understand where you need points of contact, where you need to apply force, or whether you need to put contact here, hold contact here, apply force here, or end on. Remember, if you are hammering end on to your material, a little thought, If you're trying to get the tip to scroll up, right, and your material's like that, and you're hammering dead straight into this, there's no turn up on it, so all the force is going to do is that, and it'll upset up, right? But you get a little bit of turn coming upwards, I like to get it at least 90 degrees, and then I'm putting a force going this way, that's actually creating a turning motion, which is causing this to roll out. And likewise, if you're going the other way, off the edge of the anvil, um, you're kind of like that. You want, it's kind of a, an interesting body position. I take my hammer sideways, 
like this, and it's more of a strum, but I'm holding the hammer face at 45. So my force is direct up and down, but as it comes down here, it glances, creates rotation. Anyway, just a Do what suits you. So here I'm getting a little close into the body of the angle, so if I wanted to, I could come out here on board. What I'm doing is I'm going through this, I'm looking for the stiff parts. I've got a little bit of a stiff bit there, so I want to find point of contact. I want to get bent here in this line, so I need to apply force there. And all being well, it will bend where I want it. As I'm going through, I'm just trying to keep this thing straight. Um, a lot of people get lost in straightening scrolls. Um, just because it's curved doesn't mean it's not a straight line. Okay, and that's like a weird idea. But we're trying to straighten this way, okay? And the bar is doing this. But if you consider it as a straight piece of bar and you just keep working through that rotation of it, I wish I had a ring. Uh, but if, as you work through the rotation, you'll see the kinks one way or the other. And if you've got a kink on a scroll that does this, what it's going to look like is that the scroll is kicked out. And it isn't, it's just a little bent there in the bar. So, just be aware of that. Back on the board for the fun of it. Wants to, you can actually apply force in that way as well. Okay, so I'm really glad that happened. So when you get from thick section into thin section, you'll sometimes see this. So what happened, because of the vibration going through here, I had movement in this, okay? So that's kind of a fun one. How do you access this when it's encapsulated in the line? The easiest thing to do, knock everything out of alignment, okay? And that will allow me to get in at this to close that up a little bit, or I can come in here, and then push everything back into alignment. Crazy, right? Um, but often when you're doing big scrolls, you'll get that excessive force, and the inside, because it is such light material, it will just vibrate and basically throw itself open generally. It usually clashes out into the outer ring and by that what I mean is you'll have a lovely scroll not much like that and this bit here will migrate out so you kind of wind up in that kind of a manner. And it just means you need to put more bend in here in order to pull and rotate that after a while, it makes sense to the brain. Um, so, this opened up here through this line. So, all I have to do kind of fun trying to position it for the camera. Uh, I'm going to get one in there. Have a look at it from above. Even though it's um, spiraling outwards, it doesn't really make much difference to the flat format. A little tuck more there at the tip. That looks fair. Push that a touch more. Couldn't get my hammer quite in where I wanted it. <laughs> and then flatten back down. Now I get a chance to look down it. So if you look down this, can you see that just it kind of kinks here? Mm -hmm. So that is, it makes it look like the whole thing is kind of cockeyed like that, but really it's just a bend there. So if I do a little straight through that area, have a look at it, a little bit more. Look at it, it's good. 
less touch to the left there. That's the other side. Trying to support the ring where I'm trying to work. Uh, so if I want to move the core, I might want to push it out here in order to strike there because I don't want to be creating bend up through that area. Have a look at it from all directions, just kind of rolling through. Yeah, that'll work. It's an easy enough strong. Have a play with that. So that's bending in a nutshell. You're going to make some ugly ones. Uh, and that's okay, but try and understand them, try and learn how to control them. Go, have fun.